Oh boy, this is gonna be a good one. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. You ever have that feeling when you click on a video or when you make a video that, oh, that's gonna be a viral hit? Th this is the one, this is the one right here. <laughs> So, uh, Gibson, uh, happened to have made a mistake that got pointed out to me, and I'm like, oh, I just love picking on Gibson, because they're my favorite brand, and to be able to get this guitar at this point in time is just fantastic for me. So, this is, uh, allegedly a prototype that wasn't meant to make it out of the factory. Like, this is an oopsie, or maybe Gibson did this on purpose, hoping that I would find this guitar and make a public video about it. So, so I don't know who's bamboozling who here, but let's go ahead and open this thing. Huh, Les Paul Standard 50s Gold Top. Demo model, from Sweetwater. Okay. Alright. What's so special about that? The 50s Les Paul Standard was introduced in 2019 when they revamped their whole thing, did the modern and original collection. And I reviewed the P90 Gold Top version. So when this humbuckered version came up, I was like, yeah, yeah, why, why don't we check it out? But I think we all know that that's not what's inside of this box. Okay, so the story behind this is the guy who had purchased this from Sweetwater. Yes, it was a demo model and it was sold as this, but he saw this guitar just browsing their website and he knew something was up and something was special about this one because it didn't look like all the other guitars. And so he made no waste of time. He just went ahead and bought it and then he messaged me and said, hey, I've got a guitar here that I think you're going to be interested in reviewing. So we kind of went back and forth on price for a little bit, and then after about a week of him owning it, he said, okay, I'm ready to sell, so we made the deal to make it happen. What is sleeping inside this case? Is it a prototype that wasn't meant to leave the factory, or was it something that Gibson intentionally sent out because they were done with it? I'm not gonna be able to answer that, but inside here, is the Slash Gold Top. Everybody was up in arms when they released the Slash standards for 2020 that they didn't do a Gold Top. Everyone was expecting it. But instead, we got the Anaconda Burst, which I did an unboxing of. We did the Vermilion Burst, which was the only new finish. And then they had November and Appetite Burst. But this is that one blatant color that you knew they were missing. But here it is. Potentially the first one ever made, or maybe they scrapped this color and decided not to do it, but here it is, our serial number, 2020, that was made the 51st day of the year. But this guy is Slashbacks. I'm told it has the Slash pickups in it, so it's not just that the covers have been replaced on this guy, and it's not that somebody just replaced the truss rod cover on this. Because I mean, you can't replace the Scully on the back side of the headstock. And the other thing that's different between the other gold tops from the 50s collection is they don't have a dark back like this. I believe they are natural backs, so that is something else that is also unique to the slashness of this. So, isn't that crazy? I'm pretty sure that this 100% confirms we will eventually see a Slash Gold Top. This is probably like a 2021 Winter Nam Show type thing. But you've seen it here first, guys! <laughs> the Slash Gold Top in what, mid-2020? Oh man, Gibson's probably hating me for showing you guys this when it's like a Smash Bros match. They made a little mistake and I'm coming in for the punish! So let's go ahead and check out the Slash Gold Top on the bench. Now before we dive into this, here's the photos taken directly from Sweetwater's website when this was sold to prove that it's not just a refinished Slash Les Paul standard and somebody's just playing games here. But here it is, inside of this thing. After seeing some of this stuff, I really do believe this was like a prototype. They were trying some things out because I think we all know a Slash Gold Top will eventually come out within this series. But what do our pickup cavities look like in here? So this one kind of takes after the Anaconda Burst where it does not have any type of markings within the pickup cavities and they are completely bare. There's no finish on here. But what kind of makes me think this might have been a prototype they don't really care is the fact that there's actually finish kind of 
of sticking off right here in a ridge. I'm kind of scared to pick away at that because I don't want it to accidentally chip the finish here. But you can see that in both the top and bottom. So I'm wondering if they're doing something special with this maybe? Because I know gold tops change colors, but this one almost appears to be a little bit more crazy in the way that it gets dark to light. So maybe they're using a different type of bronze powder in here or something. But you can see right here, it is a short neck tenon. It looks like two piece maple top. So everything's about the same there. The only difference is between this and all the other ones is you can't actually see the super flameage. I'd imagine these do not get the super flamey tops, but who knows? I guess we could take a look back here and if that doesn't work for us, we can use that super secret trick. But this does indeed utilize the new slash bucker pickups. We've got all our water slides and stickers intact on this one, unlike that last one I did a review on. But hey, for the fun of it, bridge pickup reads 8.63, our neck pickup reads 8.3, and then them together is 4.23. Do we have any fancy electronics? Nope, it's just regular slash stuff in there, so it should be CTS pots, but we'll find out in a minute. The bridge, nothing special, just the Gibson ABR1 style that sits on the Nashville style stud. So it's not a true ABR1, but it is an ABR1 bridge. And we've got the lightweight aluminum tailpiece by Advanced Plating Incorporated, just like all the other ones. Now we'll just take a quick swoop around the gold top finish here. I'm not a huge gold top fan, but occasionally one will speak to me. And this is the one, as soon as I open the box, it's like, yes, I like this one. Maybe it has to do with not having a pick guard. There is a pick guard in the case. We'll check that out later. Or maybe it's just the uncovered pickups that really makes this one work or the slash affiliation. I think that's probably what it is. Signature guitars do have a certain effect to them. But now moving on from the mahogany body and the maple top, we have a traditional rosewood fretboard here. I just conditioned it very lightly, so we're all looking good here. You can see the typical tooling marks around the edges of the binding. I mean, this one's not too bad as far as the brand new Gibsons go. At least we don't have any like giant divots anywhere. And the nut appears to be pretty good, but these are medium jumbo frets. There's 22 of them. And we've got that standard 12 inch radius. Let's see if they're messing around with neck specs at all. 1.69 inches at the nut so that's fairly standard and by the 12th 2.08 so that's looking good first fret neck depth 0.9 and 0.1 by the 12th so it looks like they're just sticking with that normal slash neck profile the only place on the binding that they really chewed it up was right there by the first fret but i probably could clean that up with a razor blade if i wanted to but here's what the slash neck profile looks like visually so a standard c-shaped neck that just kind of gets a little bit bigger by the 12th kind of that 59 profile Moving on to the face of the headstock, nothing too fancy up here, just your Klusen style tuners with your Les Paul silk screen, all your regular stuff, your truss rod works, and you've got the slash truss rod cover on here. The knobs are the golden bell style with the thumb bleeder pointers on here, kind of similar to what's used on the November burst, but this is also what the regular 50s gold top standards get as well. I personally hate throwing the word prototype around if it's not written anywhere on the guitar. So I decided to take out the pots on this one. I had to desolder the ground wire to get them out, but that's the only thing that I touched. All of this for a chance to find something written underneath the pots on the maple cap. Unfortunately, I did not find much under here. You can see some sort of squiggle right there. STP or maybe just SP. So that's probably just some sort of quality control sign off GV. But over here, we might have found something. That looks like slash to me, S-L-A-S-H. Or it could really be anything. I think I'm just looking for something that says slash. And over here, it just says OB. So if anybody that works at the Gibson USA factory sees this, maybe they can tell us what all this stuff means. But this does not look like figured maple at all. So that also tells you that this isn't just a factory oopsie job. This was intentionally done as a gold top because everything else is just about correct because they wouldn't have a plain top slash model that had a dark back. So here's what this looks like now that it's all back together. The only thing that's been touched on this is that ground wire. Everything else is 100% factory stock. I just thought, you know, it was worth a shot. We could have found something really cool under there. And now nobody ever has to take this guitar apart again. We know what is in every crevice of this thing. But it just looks like your standard original series collection stuff. So you've got the Gibson branded pots with orange drop caps that are all hand wired. 
But look at this nice, beautiful dark back. I love myself a dark back gold top. These things are great. But something else that kind of tells me this might have been a prototype or just a sample is the bottom strap button is actually uh, kind of stripped. <laughs> it sticks in there good enough, but you can't actually tighten it all the way down. So you'd have to use either a larger screw or repair that with like the toothpick method or fill it in. Kind of unacceptable on a brand new guitar in my opinion. And the last cavity to explore is the toggle switch cavity. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing any markings in here either. But continuing on here, you can see the back of the neck. It is also a one piece mahogany. And here you go. Here's how you know how it was meant to be a slash model. You got the scully. Well, what's kind of funny is I really regret not buying the one slash model I found that accidentally left the factory without the scully, because that would have been a perfect collection piece, that one and this one. <laughs> one that wasn't supposed to, potentially, and one that was supposed to. But you got your Gibson Cluson style deluxe tuners here, and again, our serial number dates this one into February. So just about a week after Valentine's Day, so they were definitely thinking about this one pretty early on. Oh, and in case you're wondering why this was sold as a demo model, is there's a little ding right here, but honestly, it almost looks like a finished touch-up to me, so that would also suggest that this was never meant to leave the factory, but I'm not 100% sure on that. It just feels like something else other than a ding. Because most dings aren't perfectly circular, and it almost feels like there's something sitting on top of that. Like, even if they just filled that in with super glue or something. And definitely looks to me like Gibson had something else on here. And usually they put one of those blue things in there to secure the fit. But you can see just how much larger that hole is than the screw. So, I guess that's why it's not taken. But this example weighs 9 pounds, 11.9 ounces. Let's go ahead and hear how this thing sounds. <laughs> So what's my final verdict on the unreleased slash Les Paul standard? Ah, oh, man, I cannot say enough good things about the 50s, 60s, and slash Les Pauls. They really are pretty much the best Les Pauls that they've made in a long time out of the Gibson USA shop. Now, I'm like a rare guitar hunter and stuff, so having a guitar that's not supposed to exist yet really pumps me up and motivates me to play. So I had the best time on this gold top than I've had on any other gold top. So whether it was just a factory mix-up or it's actually a prototype of something that we'll see next year, 
No matter what, it's not supposed to exist yet. And that just makes me all the more happy that I was able to document it even before it was officially released. So definitely check one of these out when they do come out because I had a great time with it. Just a quick recap what makes this different from the regular 50s gold top standards. It basically just comes down to that dark back finish, stock Schaller strap locks. You get the new slash bucker combination set. You get the scully on the back of the headstock, the special slash truss rod cover. And I swear there's something a little bit special with this finish going on. Well, let's go ahead and check it out under blacklight real quick. Being a brand new guitar, we don't have too much to go over here, but we can at least check it out. I guess if this truly was a prototype, there is a very small chance that Slash might have played this guitar. I wouldn't put much faith into that, because I think this is probably just like an idea guitar. But hey, who knows, maybe if he watches this video, he can confirm or deny the existence of these. The case is just the standard case that all these other ones come in. It's the new Gibson Made in China cases. They've got these plastic exterior bits to them instead of the usual stuff. And you kind of get a weaker looking latch, but you know, a case is a case. But inside here, I was surprised this actually came with all the Slash standard stuff. Even the baby photo, now that's a surprise. So if you need further proof that they came from the factory as a gold top like this, there you go. But there's your blank truss rod cover, you get the case key, here's your serial number on there, you get the Slash picks, you get the pick guard if you wish to install it, the Sweetwater card, the Gibson strap, your warranty information if you want to register it, your Dunlop strap lock buttons for your strap, the Gibson owner's manual, you get your polishing cloth, even the multi-tool, and the bag to put all this stuff in. Troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this Gibson Les Paul slash gold top standard before it was even released. I guess we'll have to see if these come out in 2021 or not, but if you can't wait and you want to own the potential prototype piece here, you can check it out on my reverb shop. I'll go ahead and throw it up for a crazy price. I mean, it's kind of a collectible guitar. You're not just paying for a slash standard at this point. But thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.